Welcome back to 13C. Today we're taking a look at a brand new optic for 2017 from Nikon. This is their 6 to 24 power by 50 millimeter objective black X1000. Now this also includes their illuminated reticle and this is in the MRAD configuration. Uh, I have it on good authority that there should be an MOA coming down the pipeline sometime soon. So keep your eyes open for that if you're a MOA fan over MRAD. Both have their pluses and negatives. We might get into that a little bit later in the video, uh, but for the most part, I won't dive into that too deep. I'm gonna try and stay focused on this optic here, even though I'm gonna answer a lot of your questions here today, including uh, your previous questions on this CMMG Mark IV Recce. I've uh, kind of decked it out with uh, some, some heavier things on here, of course. Obviously, the optic itself and the mount, uh, normally I run a red dot on this setup, but you've asked for some more accuracy testing, so that's what we're going to do here today on this before we move it on to another rifle. I've got this Atlas bipod on the end here in from Optics Planet that uh, we're continuing our testing on as well. So we're just going to kind of drill through these really quick right down the line. Let's get through the dry stuff really fast here. Uh, the glass on here is arsenic free. It's fully multi-coated multi as you would expect. Uh, the reticle itself is in the second focal plane. So when you're doing your ranging with that milrad, you're gonna wanna do it at the 18 power setting. On the back here on your uh, power indicator, there's a line under the 18. If there's no line under an optic like this in the second focal plane, you would range at your maximum power. With the line under the 18 here, that indicates that when you're doing your ranging, you want it to be at 18 power so that you're as accurate as possible. Um, this is waterproof, shockproof, and fogproof. It includes a sunshade, uh, the lifetime Nikon no-fault warranty on all the uh, glass and mechanical. The illuminated portion of the reticle on this is covered by their one-year warranty on electrical components. Everything else is lifetime, no fault. Just make sure you save your uh, original uh, receipt for this because uh, that's what they're doing right now. They're asking for a proof of purchase just to uh, show ownership. All right, now that we've got the most boring dry stuff out of the way, let's do some shooting on this. We'll answer that question right off the bat, and then we'll get right back into the rest of the review on this. So here we are down at 100 yards with the CMMG Mark IV Recce and the Federal 77 grain OTM ammunition. And here are our five rounds, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, nice tight grouping there, under an inch. Uh, the Federal 77 grain OTM continues to do very well for me on these one and seven twist barrels. And uh, the CMMG Mark IV Recce continues to uh, perform even with the uh, I have no idea how many thousands of rounds have been through it now. You guys have seen me uh, running in a couple of classes. Uh, the original testing, uh, we did mag dumps in it with the X products, uh, drum, a uh, number of different things. I have no idea how many thousands of rounds are through this guy at this point. And it's still putting out sub MOA groupings here at 100 yards. Very pleased with that. So let's get into some of the features and controls and adjustment points here uh, of this optic. As I mentioned earlier, this is has their MRAD reticle. And your adjustments on here, one click equals 0.1 MRAD. And uh, for, for, for those of us who are fan of the inch system over the metric, after all, it is the only system to put a man on the moon as of this date, uh, your adjustments uh, for that 0.1 MRAD at 100 meters is going to be one centimeter. And uh, from your adjustments, you remember back in school, 2.54 centimeters is going to be one inch. Now, as you're doing this, uh, some of this may get a little tricky, some of it doesn't. Try and keep in mind an MRAD is simply uh, one one thousandth of whatever distance you're looking. It is better if you're going to do this uh, and you're doing your calculations, I find anyway, and we'll get into that more later. Uh, if you're going with meters, stick with meters all the way through. If that means at the beginning you have to transfer from inches to centimeters to then go to meters, uh, do it that way. At least that's my opinion. There's a lot of videos on that. I've done some videos on it. There's some other guys who do an amazing job, long range video. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel on that. Well, that's just kind of the overall bird's eye view uh, where we're at right now. Anyway, onto the controls, one click, 0.1 MRAD, one centimeter at 100 yard meters. Um, you've got zero reset turrets. What that means is when you're dialed in here, 
you can lift it up, it'll pop and free spin so that you can reset your dial back to zero stop. And then that way, uh, as you're making adjustments later on, you wanna adjust for windage or elevation, some distance, different distance, you can dial yourself right back to zero and you'll be right where your zero was for wherever you set yourself up at, be it a uh, hundred yard zero, 200, 300, whatever that is, doesn't matter, you can return this back to zero and then that's your starting point going in either direction. Uh, I mentioned this has an illuminated reticle, it does, it has 10 uh, features uh, stops on it for illumination, one through 10, and there is a stop in between each one, so you can turn it off, uh, be it turn it off in between one and 10, or five and six, anywhere around the dial, you can turn it off in between each stop, which is really nice to My see. My apologies for picking up a lot of the back noise. Farmers are out in the fields here, all around me here, so you may hear a little bit of that. Again, my apologies if that's bleeding through. Uh, so you've got those stops on there, which is nice. As far as your illumination, the number one illumination is very, very, very dim. You can barely pick it out, which is nice because in low light, if you ever need to drop down that low, you're able to and you're not able to uh, drown out your target with a super bright reticle. The 10 is as bright as it goes and in a bright sunlight like we have here today, uh, using it to look through, um, it's gonna, you're kind of gonna be able to tell the difference turning it on and off, but not too much. So that 10 power on a bright sunny day, on the flip side though, if it's a bright sunny day, this etched reticle, you're gonna have absolutely no problem seeing that. So this is more I would consider for low light situations. It does fully illuminate that inside reticle of your five uh, MRAD uh, variation of hash marks all the way out both uh, east and west and north and south. Before we get off the subject of illumination, uh, this takes a 2032 battery, a CR2032 battery. Um, the optic itself is waterproof, fogproof, shockproof. The battery compartment for this is technically water resistant. So if you were to submerge this, and I think the submersion uh, rate on this is, uh, I think maybe it's one meter for 10 minutes, if that, you wanna look that up and check that out to be sure if you're planning on submerging this. But I wouldn't submerge it, but if it does fall in a puddle or something, don't worry about it, grab it out. If you get water in your battery compartment, you're gonna need to take the battery out, leave the uh, lid off the top of it. So then that way uh, you can dry that out completely before you put it back in there. It should not damage the internals there, it's sealed, but you would not wanna leave uh, standing water sit inside here if some managed to uh, penetrate inside your battery compartment because obviously you're gonna rust and you're gonna mess up the uh, electronics in there without fully drying that out. Now, so let's talk a little bit more about this MRAD reticle that's in here. Um, for ranging purposes, be it uh, MOA ranging or MRAD, uh, reticles like this are great for that purpose. Uh, just keep in mind you need to know how to use it and you you know you can do Kentucky windage if you want but these are set up so that you can really dial them in and really reach out there to distance and do your steps right. And we go through some numbers here these are kind of overview uh, ballpark type bird's eye view numbers. If you want to get into good solid long range shooting you're going to want to be a little more precise but we're going to get through here today is basically going to cover you from zero out to three four hundred maybe even five hundred uh, yards or meters uh, depending on what caliber you're going to have on here. So with that in mind let's dive right down into the details. You're gonna to wanna to do your ranging estimation on this one at 18 power. It's got that little line under the 18. I know most things in second focal plane, a lot of them you'll range out at the maximum magnification on this going all the way up to 24 power. They don't have you do it there. They have you do it at 18, which is actually nice to see because when you zoom in all the way to 24, you're getting a lot more range there and it's gonna make it harder to range things uh, if you get in a little bit closer because your magnification is so high. So your reticle thickness itself is going to be 0.25 MRAD and those outside posts that frame it up are going to be 1 MRAD thick. You've got a smaller hash mark every 0.5 MRAD and a wider hash mark every 1 MRAD. And for those wider hash marks, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 MRAD going both uh, south, north, east, and west coming off your, the center of your crosshair. From your most distant hash mark to that thicker outer post is two MRAD. So from that uh, five hash mark, five MRAD hash mark, you've got the space and then your outer post, that is two MRAD to bridge that gap. So let's talk about some of the ranging features and what that means in a practical sense. Um, 
I mentioned earlier you want to start in the metrics and end in the metrics. Um, I find that's easier as far as trying to convert in the middle of your actual equation. Convert ahead of time, convert after, but for the actual equation that you're going to be using, stick with metric. That's, that's my opinion anyway. There's formulas to do it either way. I'll put those down below uh, and over 13cgunreviews.com, something like that. And there's previous videos uh, out there as well on that we've done, but that's kind of just the bird's eye view. That's how I like to do it. It's a lot easier to remember, especially when you're out in the field. So, um, for example, you've got, uh, let's say you're going to range in a coyote. Coyote runs about two foot high, give or take, depending on where you are in the country, obviously. Uh, let's say two foot high, 24 inches. Take your 25, four inches, times it by 2.54, and then you're going to come out with 61 centimeters. Now, honestly, when I'm doing this, unless I'm actually shooting at longer distances, more than two or 300 yards, I'll do some rounding and I'll cheat. If you're pushing out three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred you know obviously and beyond you don't want to cheat because the, those small uh, discrepancies up front will translate into large distances there at the end we're talking kind of just making it easy for the point of this video so uh, we're looking about 60 centimeters high for a coyote roughly uh, if you're talking about bipeds the average biped comes in about 5 foot 10 5 11 uh, which runs in 70 71 inches uh, which comes out to 178 centimeters technically Honestly, I prefer to round it to 180. Maybe I'm giving it an extra inch or two in height, but 180 is uh, easier to deal with anyway than 178, in my opinion anyway. So let's see this in practice. We're going to take our size of our target in centimeters, divided by how many MRADs high it is, and then times it by 10, and that will give us our distance in meters. So uh, let's go ahead with the uh, biped example. Uh, 178 centimeters divided by 5 MRAD, so let's say it takes up that full hash marks from the center down to that bottom hash mark, all five. Then we times that by 10, and that gives us our distance of 356 meters. Now, at this point, if you want to convert back to yards, you're more than welcome to, and the rounding estimation for that, generally speaking, is just to divide, is just to subtract 10% off of that number. Uh, 356 minus 10% is going to put you down around about the 320 yard mark. Now, obviously, we're right at the distance right there where rounding and doing some of these estimations are still okay. But as you, you know, and obviously this is caliber dependent as well. But when you start getting out past that, you're going to want to be precise on this. You run in an optic like this, you're probably going to want to set it up on your rifle. It's going to stay on. It's not going to stay on this rifle. It's going to move uh, actually here in just a minute. I'm going to move it over to the Bushmaster ACR, but um, and then it's going to go to another rifle after that. But for our accuracy purposes and to do more testing on this optic, just to make sure everything's where we want it to be, that's how we're running it this way. Um, anyway, you're going to want to get a dope card and everything else set up so that you know your distances. You actually go out at those ranges and confirm on paper what you're actually doing so that it lines up together. Now for ranging purposes, there is a much easier way to do it. Simply pick up a laser range finder. This is the uh, Nikon uh, Monarch 7i VR. It's got the vibration reduction, same, uh, same type of technology that's actually in some of their higher end cameras uh, to stabilize those lenses, or I should say in the lenses themselves actually, to stabilize those lenses on your DSLRs and uh, other uh, even full frame cameras uh, like that. So. This is really cool, and I've actually been using the two of these together to hone my skills uh, a little greater on some of my ranging. And I find when I get um, the height right on my target, and I follow the formula, you know, reading off the MRADs in here, uh, it's coming in very close to our laser rangefinder, which I've compared this one with an older laser rangefinder I have, and this guy is dead on accurate. I think I forget the plus or minus uh, variations they give it in the uh, thing, but you're talking about like plus or minus 0.1 yard when you're doing uh, your calculations with these. So this uh, is actually a really nice uh, piece of glass, and we may wind up doing our own standalone review on that at some point in the future. In addition to that, you've also got the Nikon Spot app, Spot On app. You can download onto your phone. Uh, they have it for Android as well as Apple. Download it onto your phone, and uh, once you download it with Wi-Fi, when it's on your phone, you don't actually need to connect to the internet to use it, which is nice. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you want to pull out your phone and do some ranging uh, estimation, you can definitely do that for holdovers. And what you do is you put in the optic that you have, the bullet that you have, how high over the bore your optic is, uh, depending on what kind of mount you have, how high you have it set up, and then you type in what you're zeroed for and where your shot is gonna be, and it will tell you 
exactly what, how you need to adjust that. It will give you your holdovers in these uh, for your uh, reticle in here to show you where you need to go as well for distant, different distances out specific to your caliber that you have this on. That's a really nice feature to see. I've talked about that in other videos, but uh, definitely don't neglect that app if you have uh, one of Nikon's optics, download it, it's free, get it on your phone, and uh, it's compatible with most uh, common bullet types that you're gonna be out there using, including the 77 grain federal uh, OTM bullets that we're using here today. So your parallax adjustment on here is pretty thorough. It goes from 50 meters all the way to infinity, and the marked uh, stops on here are 60, 75, 100, 150, 200, 300, 500, 1000, and then that infinity mark. Um, a lot of people will adjust their parallax based upon how clear the target looks and and that works um, but when you're talking at greater distances you want to make sure that you're adjusting your parallax for your distance the the function of the target becoming clear in your optic is secondary to adjusting uh, your reticle plane with your target and, and that's the very very simple uh, explanation there. A lot of people have done a lot of videos on that. I think in one of our previous videos I got into that a little more. I won't do that here. Uh, otherwise the video is going to be way too long and really off topic. But that is nice to see that they're being more specific on that, especially in an optic that goes from 6 to 24 power. You've got a lot of range there and you want to make sure you're lining everything right. Uh, speaking of things being clear and the clarity there, it's got a fast focus eyepiece in the back, meaning you turn this back portion and that is what makes your reticle crisp and sharp to your eye. So that's taking out whatever sort of uh, uh, variation in <clears throat> vision between various shooters there would be. You can set this directly uh, to whatever your eye is to make it nice and crisp. Uh, you know, and for, for purposes of doing that, you want to point your optic at uh, something blank, like a white wall or a sky, not in the sun, but like plain sky, so that your eye can focus just on that reticle, adjust it till the reticle is nice and crisp and clear, and then you won't have any fuzziness, and it'll work out in that regard. Uh, I should talk about the mount that's on here. This is the new Nikon Black AR cantilever mount here pretty nice mount system seems to go on here pretty well and lock down nice and tight it's got the uh, X pattern as well here on the top for your rings uh, seems to have pretty good clamp down force and uh, so far it's doing pretty well we'll see uh, more as we use it some more how it holds up so I think we're gonna get into our final thoughts here now while we've still got the light going for us before I move this over to the Bushmaster ACR. It's been in for several weeks for testing and um, with your comments and feedback, that's why we actually moved it over to this rifle uh, for this review because you guys wanted a follow up on this uh, accuracy for the Mark IV Recce. Uh, obviously, hopefully you're as pleased with it as I am uh, now after uh, all the use and abuse I put on this guy over the past, uh, I don't know, probably 18-ish months, give or take. So, um, the controls on this, by the way, uh, very tactile. You get audio and, uh, and tactile response here as you turn it. Um, yeah, this is one of those things where I'd kind of like caps on it because given kind of what Nikon is going for with this and what I would use it for, um, I would like to see, you know, if you're gonna accidentally bump up against it, it wouldn't be as easy to move these because uh, for me, I would rather put something like a Monarch 7 on a precision rifle uh, and use this for something that's a little more quote unquote tactical, like AR style semi-automatic type uh, rifles. But um, with the zero stop on here, if it does get bumped inadvertently and turned, um, you know, it takes a deliberate action to move it. But you know, if you've got it rubbing up against something, uh, bouncing around, you know, things happen. Um, you can look at it, you'll look at it and see, oh, well, we're not on zero and you can dial it right back to zero and you'll be right on where you need to be. So, you know, plus and minuses on that, the ability to get at it quick and easy for adjustments, you know, it's a trade-off right there. Otherwise, um, I've, been, I've been pleased with this setup the way it is uh, and with this uh, Nikon black mount here. It's, uh, they've done, done pretty well with it. The uh, quality of glass is uh, on par with what you'd expect for Nikon and uh, the quality of the glass is probably above the price point where this comes in at. Um, I think right now over on maybe Optics Planet, for example, these, uh, these are running in the uh, uh, maybe 675-ish, 700 range uh, for the optic itself here. So yeah, 
I, I think that probably pretty much covers it. Let's get this moved over. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can leave them down below. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash gun reviews is another great place to get a hold of us because uh, there we get those notifications a lot easier. Sometimes we can miss them on YouTube. Their notifications there are notoriously bad. And they have been for years. I don't know why they haven't uh, streamlined those a little bit for those of us uh, who get a lot of feedback on our videos. Um, Instagram, we're at 13C Gun Reviews, and of course the uh, homepage, the website with all the articles and more in-depth de information, more pictures and stuff like that, 13C.us or 13CGunReviews.com. Uh, you can also click through there to our swag shop uh, if you want to support the channel in that way. We're not doing a Patreon, but you can support the channel by going and buying uh, some uh, limited edition 13C Fight Soap collaboration we did or some patches. Uh, kind of miscellaneous swag there if you're interested. Thanks again everybody, and we'll talk soon. So I'm working on getting the Bushmaster ACR DMR sighted in here. And I start out with some 62 grain cheaper stuff to get myself on paper. Then I work up to the 77 grain OTM for our, for our groupings. And I start seeing some weird stuff. So I get us centered in right here, three round grouping. Um, then I notice we our grouping kind of drops, stays kind of tight, drops. And then it just starts opening up and getting weird. Now, you see this five round grouping here. This is from earlier uh, in the review with the uh, CMMG Mark IV Recce, those five, five round grouping. And my plan was to go ahead and move over uh, to this target and show a comparison group uh, with this at 100 yards as well. So I put three rounds in right here. And I said to myself, oh, well, you know, I'm a little higher up. Um, let, me, let me drop it down a few clicks. I dropped it down a few clicks. And then I wound up with over here. I'm like, what the hell? So I wound up switching back. I went over to this target and I started chasing myself all over. And this last thing threw around, I don't remember which one was where, but it wound up throwing around off, I think this one. And uh, I, wait, something's going on. So as some of this stuff was moving around, I checked my optic. It's rock solid on here. The mount is rock solid. And at this point, my. <laughs> My, uh, my turret adjustments, uh, I'm running out of MRADs of adjustment. Like, what is going on? So I reach up and I grab the barrel and check this out. It is moving in here. The barrel is actually moving substantially. I'm actually shocked I was getting some of the groupings that I, that I was. So my thought initially for this rifle, and I'm gonna roll this into the actual Bushmaster ACR review. Um, I wanted to get some base groupings with it from the factory, factory torqued before I wound up changing the barrel out, because I've got a 16 inch barrel we're gonna put on this. Changing barrels out, seeing how it affects, affects the uh, point of impact and the shift going from 18 to 16 to 18 back and forth. Just, just we're real, That's gonna be a really in-depth review on this, so definitely uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, for that one. That'll, it's probably gonna take me a couple more weeks to get this compiled and finished up, so I would assume the beginning of August is probably 2017 is as soon as I'm gonna be able to get this video out. Uh, and here we are in the middle of June right now, but, um, Anyway, this thing is moving around in here, so I'm gonna pop the pins on this, uh, on the uh, thing here, figure out exactly what in the hell is going on. And I don't know if I'll actually include this in this video and move it over to the other one, but you can see this guy moving around. Now this thing, oh wow, yeah, this thing moved substantially. All right, now it's rock solid. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get another, uh, another grouping on here in time. Uh, Mrs. 13C Gun Reviews is calling me to dinner, and the sun's starting to go down. As you can tell, the shadows are getting pretty long here. So um, that may wrap us up. But thanks, guys. Just something interesting. If you get uh, if you get one of these and you're trying to figure out what's going on, that's what just happened right there. For whatever reason, it really wasn't actually torqued down from the factory uh, like it should have been. So we're going to see exactly how this plays out, how it demonstrates uh, what this rifle is capable of. I would assume we're seeing some of these other groupings before it started moving around where it was. And we're also gonna see, after repeated shooting, if this barrel loosens itself up any. Maybe it just wasn't fully uh, cinched down uh, when it came. Anyway, I don't know, I don't re remember it moving around when I got it, but uh, I don't really remember screwing around with it either. Anyway, thanks guys, uh, we'll talk soon. soon. The loose barrel was the last thing on my mind, and it was the last thing I checked. Um, the optic, as far as I checked, 
make sure it was sound in the rings and the mount was solid on here because that's usually something like that when you start seeing things like that uh, what i was encountering that's normally what it is um i after i checked that a couple times i thought to myself well maybe i somehow mixed up my ammo when i was shooting 55 grain in with the 77 otms just just some bulk 55 grain i, I don't know I, I had no idea what was going on anyway i did finally after that last grouping that i fired i think you know i figured it out it was loose got us in front of the target on the camera showed you guys i locked it down it has not moved since which is good news uh i guess it's just a qc qc thing they missed it uh, when they shipped it out from the factory unfortunately um that they that it wasn't fully locked down um unless you know it it did sit at my ffl for uh over the weekend you never know my it i mean my FFL could have been playing with it, you know, took the barrel off to see how it worked and never locked it back down on there. I don't know. Um, so I, I don't want to necessarily put that on Bushmaster um, because, you know, it was, you know, when, when I got there, you know, it was, it was there in the case, but the case had already been opened. I assume normally, you know, they check the serial numbers. Who knows? Anyway, I'm digressing at this point. So let's walk you through what I did. Uh, fired a bunch of 62 grain to get us uh, back on paper. I actually put a bigger backing behind this and got it close to it because I ran out the adjustments in the scope, actually. I think I mentioned that before. Um, anyway, I got us down on the target on this one, got a fresh paper up, got us onto it. And here we are. This was at about 45 yards, maybe 42, something like that. I mean, I was shy of the 50 yard line, just trying to get us uh, back onto paper and figure out what was going on. Um, anyway, three rounds right here, this is 62 grain, uh, federal bulk stuff, the XM855. This is our 77 grain OTM. This is again at about that 45-ish mark. Um, and then I had my last three rounds of OTM, so I pushed us back out to 100 yards. And at 100, we have one, two, and three right here. So that's gonna do it, I'm out of the 77 grain match. I'm gonna to have to get some more in. I'm gonna save the rest of the accuracy uh, with the 18 and a half inch barrel, the 16 inch barrel that I have, swapping between the two, seeing how the 18 inch and 18 and a half inch comes off. Uh, can you just put it right back on there? Will it be at zero or relative zero in relationship to where you have the optic set before? Um, we're gonna find out, I'm gonna answer all those questions, go through reliability, magazine testing, the whole nine yards on this. So definitely, if you haven't subscribed yet, Please go ahead, click that subscribe button. You'll get notification when this comes up. It's the middle of July now. I would think the first week in August is the soonest I'm gonna be able to get all this together because it's gonna take me a long time to go through all this and compile uh, for the full review. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, leave those questions about what you wanna see in this video and I'll try and get those all answered in the, uh, in the next review. Thank you, stay safe, and uh, we'll talk soon.